Hello and welcome to the Greenfoot video tutorials. My name is Michael Kölling and today I want to talk to you about a fairly specialized issue that is running the Gridworld case study in Greenfoot. Gridworld is um, a case study that is used in the US AP computer science program. I will show you today how you can use this case study in Greenfoot and what this combination gives you. So here on my screen I have Greenfoot open and now I will um, um, open here the case study. The case study in its form as it is um, provided for AP teachers um, has three examples in there. We have the same three examples in Greenfoot. First project is the first one we want to look at. Um, all those teachers who teach on the AP course uh, we'll find the classes familiar that we see here. Now I have the AP classes, the AP case study open in Greenfoot. This striped look here in my class diagram indicates that they have not been compiled, so with one click on a button I can compile my programs and there I get um, the case study with a rock and a bug. Um, all of you who have seen the case study before um, in other environments outside of Greenfoot uh, we'll find that very familiar. In um, making this case study available in Greenfoot, we have um, left as much code as possible um, identical with the original case study. That is most of the code with only very minor changes. Now I can execute this um, case study by clicking the Run button and the bug is running around on the screen and does what it does. Um, running the case study in Greenfoot has a number of advantages over running it in other environments. Uh, one is that I get a v an integrated environment with a typical very quick edit compile debug cycle. So for example if I want to change something here I can just double click my bug class. I have an editor integrated here and I could make a change for example. Change the default color of the bug to blue. I can just compile this again and now my bug is blue. Um, so making changes here is very quick and easy. Let me just change that back so that I um, remain my retain my original code here. So I can compile this again and close it. And we are back to where we were. Another advantage is that I get much more um, functionality for testing and trying out what I have done. In addition to running the whole case study, I have an ACT button here where I can if I click this, uh, make this bug act just one step at a time. So every time I click this button, the act method of this bug is executed just once. I can also interactively set up my scenario in different ways. Um, the initial position of the one initial rock and the bug in the scenario is random, but I can just take this bug and put it over here. For example, if I want to see what this bug does if it sits right in front of uh, a rock, I can just create this situation by putting them where I want them and then click the ACT button uh, to see how this bug behaves. And I can see that in this case it turns to the side and if I click ACT again it goes one step forward. Um, I can set up um, my situation quite flexibly. I can click on the bug class here and interactively now interactively um, invoke a constructor for the bug class, which gives me another bug which I can put into my world and another one. And in the same style I can also create rocks here um, that I can put into the world. And then I can just click my run button and they all run around and you can see what it does. In addition to running the whole scenario or clicking the act button which will make every actor act one time, I can make individual actors act. So if I just want to talk to this bug here on its own, I can right click on this bug and I see all the public methods of this bug. For example here I've got a can move method which checks whether this bug can currently move forward. If I invoke this I can see that this method returns true. Now if I take a rock and place it in front of it and I invoke can move, I will see that now it returns false. So there is a lot greater um, level of flexibility in, in testing individual methods. There is no need to have a complete um, 
application ready before I can test. As soon as I have a single method written, I can place my actor in the in the world interactively, and I can interactively um, invoke any of its methods. Let's have a quick look at the other standard grid world projects. There is, of course, the critters um, scenario or the critters project, which if I compile this again, looks just like the Critters, proje Critters project in the standard grid world distribution. So this runs around and does various things. And I have, um, of course, also the third, that is the box bug scenario. What this looks like in Greenfoot is this. There they are, and if I run them I can see what they do. And as before, I can interactively test this out. Um, I can, um, let's say I want to take these out, I remove this one, I remove this one, and instead I interactively create a box bug, put it here. And since the constructor has a parameter this time, I can type in that I want a length of 6 for the box, and then if I run this bug, it will hopefully do this. Um, the flexibility you gain with Greenfoot is not only in the workflow, in, in editing, compiling and debugging, it is also in modifying the scenario itself. For example, I can very easily use a different image for this actor. So here if I use the set image um, category um, uh, functionality, then you see that there is a library of images here, various categories where I have a whole number of images available um, and I can choose various things. I have here, for example, a rocket image. If I choose this one um, and recompile this, then my actors look like rockets. And at the moment only the image has changed, so if I run them, of course they do exactly the same. Um, but I have immediately another theme. Now I can um, change the flowers to be something else. I can also attach an image to the background here. If I click on the actor world and say set image and I go to the backgrounds and I look at various available backgrounds, um, there's for example a space background. So if I use this one, now I have a spacey background and now I have rockets flying in space. Maybe in that case if I wanted to do this, if I want to take this further, I would take out the specific coloring of these rockets and leave it in its original color. Um, another thing you can do in Greenfoot is um, you can modify the size of each cell in the world. In the standard um, grid world cell, here this is the size of a single cell. In Greenfoot the size is specified um, at the beginning of the world class here for example, we specify how many rows, how many columns we have, and we specify that a cell is 49 pixels. Now, taking my space theme here a bit further, if I now open another scenario here, which has a similar theme, it has a spacey theme, um, but here I have modified the cell size so that each cell is just one pixel um, big and instead I have many more cells, so I have 600 by 400 cells where each cell is only one pixel big, then you get much more accurate positioning. And so if I run this, we can get behavior such as this. This is not, oops, let me just start that again so that we see that flying. I can with my keyboard now here control um, this rocket. Adding keyboard control is very simple in green for that is easily done. And so this code Ad, ad, uh, creating a, a scenario that behaves like, like this one, like the asteroid scenario here, is um, not much more complicated than the whole grid world case study. So one of the major strengths of Greenfoot that you see here is that once you have finished covering the grid world case study itself, there are many, many uh, ways how you can take this forward. We When a project then has been developed, there is an export function that allows